Howdy folks, in this tutorial we're going to look at adding melee attacks to a character. Start by opening the attack tutorial base. This gives us a very basic setup with a character who can walk back and forth and jump and we have an enemy here doesn't cause us any damage and is non-blocking. The first thing we're going to do is add a new empty game object we're going to call this attack tutorial character attacks We'll move it up in the order here so that it has a higher priority than air movement and ground movement. And we're going to add a component called basic attacks. Let's add an attack. And we'll call this attack punch. The attack type is melee. Let's pick an animation for this attack. Attack punch. Location controls where we need to be in order for this attack to trigger. We have the options for grounded attacks, airborne attacks, any but special, which will trigger anywhere except for special moves like grappling hook, ledge climbing and so on or any, meaning the attack will trigger anywhere. For our punch, let's leave it at grounded. The next thing we need to do is decide on the button we want to trigger the attack. I'm going to leave it as button zero. The attack length controls how long the attack lasts for. The punch is a fairly quick attack, so I'm entering the value 0.4. You can optionally specify a cooldown for your attack, which means you won't be able to trigger the attack until the cooldown expires. For our basic punch attack, we don't need a cooldown. The hit window controls where inside this 0.4 seconds of attack length the attack does damage. Often attacks will have a warm up and warm down where they don't cause damage and you can use this to create a window. In the case of our punch, there's a very small warm up, a very small warm down, and will cause damage through the middle of the attack. You can optionally set the damage type, it's not required, but let's stick with physical, which makes sense for a melee attack, and how much damage the attack will do. I'm going to use one. We also need to create a hitbox for the attack. The hitbox defines where the damage gets done. Usually you would create your hitbox as a child of your sprite so that it moves and flips as your sprite moves and changes direction. I'm going to select my sprite object and create an empty child. I'm going to rename it to attack tutorial character punch hitbox. I'm going to add a rigid body to it and a box collider 2D. The rigid body will be kinematic and will not have gravity applied. Let's go to the scene view and edit the box collider. The punch is going to be someone in front of my character and I think that's a fairly generous area. So when this hitbox encounters an enemy hurt box, it will cause damage. We want to start this hitbox 
disabled. So we don't cause any damage to the character until we do the punch. I need to add a character hitbox. And now we go back and assign the hitbox. The last thing we need to do to get a very simple attack up and running is animate it. There are a couple of options for animating attacks. We're going to go with the set animation state option for a start. So if that's true, it will basically send this animation state like most normal movements do. Let's go to our animator and add a new state for attack punch. We'll call the state attack punch. Because we're using the 2D bridge, we need this name to match this animation state exactly. And if we have a look in the art, we'll see a punch animation and we'll drag that up to the motion slot. We go back to our game now. Looks like we've got all the settings we need. Let's hit play. And we'll see we now have a fairly quick punch animation. If we walk over to our enemy, we'll see that we're able to damage our enemy. And after he takes five damage, he dies. Mm -hmm.